This video is powered by DEET because mosquitoes suck and they should all die. How many of you people have thought it was super sexy to see somebody basically being like right up on a target, smack that target in the face, and then do a two-handed draw from appendix and just smoke those dummies? Well, I can tell you what I did. I dropped my draw, and I was like, are you kidding me? So let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit. First off, I think that the draw timer fetish is absolutely dangerous because here's the thing. Yes, it's fine to use a draw timer and uh, to try to be efficient and practice that, put yourself under a little bit of stress, but the fetish of it, <clears throat> like sitting there and being proud of it uh, and kind of comparing yourself to other people without any actual contextual test is kind of asinine to me. But uh, this fetish with timers is a little bit ridiculous because we're talking about the how, but not the when that and you know everything that leads up to the situation where you have to draw your firearm as a civilian and have to defend your life using a deadly force implement or instrument such as a firearm so anyways just wanted to touch on that the draw timer fetish you know grinds my gears so anyways as i said there's a concentration on how but not a concentration on when the example that i just gave you get somebody who's appendix carrying and he's they're basically just standing there and then they strike the dummy and then they do a two-handed draw so what that tells me is number one that person struck first and number two uh, he allowed them to get that close there was no movement prior and all this other stuff and uh, Basically, he had two hands available, there was no arm cage, there was no basically strike, get back, get back, get back, and then struggling to the gun. Now, I granted, this is not something that you can necessarily practice without force-on-force -force training. However, there are ways to replicate that and mimic that on a flat range, but that's not what this video is about. We're just analyzing some of this stuff that everybody finds cute and cool. So, anyways, you're basically practicing to strike first, and... That person might have been stunned by that, but because you had the time to draw your gun with two hands, get out cover and draw a gun, which is right in front of them, because I can tell you, if somebody struck first, if you were to strike first and someone was in your, you know, bad breath distance, and they saw you telegraphing that, which you do when you appendix carry, you do telegraph that, um, there's plenty of, you know, force on force uh, training <laughs> Uh, that will basically show you that you will get your gun grabbed at that distance and you will be fighting over a gun. And, <clears throat> yeah, that's not a good uh, situation to put yourself in, number one. But number two, you're basically able to back away. You've already stunned the person, but you've committed to shooting them. If there are witnesses there, they're going to see that you were the aggressor and you just smoked some guys that, you know, you were getting in an argument with. That'll be the perception. I, I know that would be my perception if I saw that. And, you know, you can, you know, talk about legal issues here and there, but that's another thing that doesn't really get discussed is uh, you got all these training classes that are going from state to state to state, but they're not putting their training into context for situations in which it is legal to use deadly force against somebody else. Because you might want to train them, hey, guess what? We're not going to be firing at all today because we got to run away. So, you know, that might be a little more realistic. So, anyways, uh, as I talked about the win to draw, you, when you have somebody that's basically telling you, okay, draw and fire from the hip, that is a very isolated and narrow field of when you can draw the gun and how to uh, employ that. Because, number one, you've let somebody into your space, and 
if you're that close and you actually feel like your life is threatened and the firearm was the last resort, <clears throat> then you probably have a problem, right? Uh, so I understand that a lot of people talk about, well, we got stand your ground laws. I don't think you understand what stand your ground laws actually mean uh, because you still need to be kind of threatened. You know, just because someone gives you a dirty look doesn't exactly mean that you need to be, uh, you know, shooting them. Like that older guy who was basically pushed over uh, and basically fell, he drew his pistol from the ground and shot somebody who wasn't even advancing on them anymore. Yeah, he's in jail. Just because of that one act, that guy got to push him, got his uh, situation diffused, he wasn't continuing to be a threat, he just pushed him, and uh, that guy uh, from the ground drew and uh, shot him. Definitely not a good shoot, but from some of these courses, they would think, you would think from some of these courses that they're basically telling you that what he did was okay, and that's a problem. <clears throat> and if you can't realize that, then you might want to brush up on the, your legal stuff beforehand and understand, you know, what the laws are, even for stand your ground, because that was a stand your ground state, just saying. So, anyways, you got to understand, I already touched on this, perception is reality, and this is where you're going to get into a lot of legal issues, um, because if there are witnesses, it's really going to be on you. I'm not saying, you know, that you got to act, but you're using a deadly force implement to protect your life. If your life isn't really threatened and somebody just wants to cold clock you, then you might want to take a boxing course first, <laughs> rather than, you know, firearms, you know, operator training course. So, you know, if you want to actually not practically, basically be dead because you'll be spending the rest of your life in prison for murder, um, <clears throat> you might want to actually practice a few things. Number one, situational awareness planning and understanding your legal rights and legal limitations. And the little segment is being proficient with a firearm at certain ranges. So, as I said, shot timers are cute. However, they are negating, neglecting one big thing is when are you going to get a visual sign that I don't really have much of a choice. And usually it's a physical sign, not a visual sign. You're going to be getting sensory overload, so to speak, probably. Because someone might throw one punch, but that's, does that mean that you can uh, draw your gun? I don't know. Your state will dictate. Uh, and the situation will as well. Um, it might be a continued assault where they're chasing you down the block and really trying to harm you. Maybe they're chasing you with sticks. Maybe... I don't know. It's all about context. And if you don't understand when you can actually draw your gun, in some states, you can't draw your gun even if they've, uh, they're have they chasing you with uh, bats and stuff like that, and you're outnumbered. Uh, sometimes you will still go to prison just because. So, you know, you got to understand that. So, concentrating and training yourself to basically let somebody into your space and then striking first, or even just doing this. How many times have you been in a in a fight where somebody's just, you know, rock 'em sock 'em robots, and they're just within arm's reach of you and they stay still? I'm pretty sure that you're going to be getting mauled. And in my experience, you know, just in boxing, that's pretty much how it works. They want to overwhelm you, get you off balance, push, you know, stuff like that. So I don't think you're going to have time to just create a little bit of distance by slapping the target and then doing a two-handed appendix draw. I'm pretty sure you're going to be bent over. Can you draw one-handed while protecting yourself, moving around and drawing one-handed efficiently without getting your gun grabbed? It might be a consideration. Taking like actual force-on-force -force classes to understand the concept of drawing your firearm for self-defense, that might be a consideration for you. So, anyways... Sorry to rant a bit. I'm going to get back to, you know, some of my draw practice. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you because it's kind of uh, annoying when you got a lot of Instagram you who's who are basically uh, teaching the how, not the when or the why, and stuff like that. Especially if you have an in-house, like somebody who's staying in their state, and they're teaching the how but not the when and why and the legal ramifications, I think you are, I, I think you are being sold short uh, 
in my opinion, because that's the one big thing that's lacking these days. But anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. Leave a comment below, and you guys have a good one.